recording. Okay. Um, aloha and welcome to the 10th annual I Teach 808 Empowering Hawaii's Teachers and Technology Conference sponsored by the Augustine Educational Foundation and Sacred Hearts Academy, Honolulu. Um, my name is Jennifer Nur, and I will be facilitating this session for you all. We're so honored to have Jacqueline Ramirez with us this morning to share her experience through a 90 minute presentation named 10 Google Classroom Tips and Tricks for Effective Teaching and Learning. Um, please be aware that we will be recording this session. If you don't like being recorded, you may consider turning off your camera during the session or reviewing the recording afterwards. Um, the recording will be made available on YouTube and shared on iTeach808's website a week after this event. And without further ado, I'll turn it over to Jacqueline. Hi, good morning. Thank you so much. It's it's so awesome to be here. I'm so excited. It's my first time presenting like this on Google Classroom, but I've used Google Classroom a lot um, and found it very helpful. So I hope that this presentation helps you. So I'm just going to launch right in and get started. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you to the I Teach 808 sponsors, the Augustine Educational Foundation, and the Sacred Hearts Academy for making this possible. Um, okay, introductions and Google experience. So I just wanted to know who is with us today. So if you can take a minute and type your name, the grades you teach, and how much experience you have with Google Classroom into the chat. Um, I know we all probably got a little bit of Google Classroom experience over the last few years with everything that happened, um, but some people have been using it for a long time and some people haven't, haven't, have maybe had the luxury of not using it at all. So I just wanted to find out. Hi, my name is um, Jolene and I, I teach at, hi. I'm at um, Second Heights Academy. I'm sorry, my dogs are barking. Um, and I teach um, second grade. So being that I'm with the lower group, um, I don't have as much, like I don't use Google Classroom or any of those sort of things for my, um, my normal because um, my students actually don't have their own devices in my classroom. I have um, 10 iPads that we sort of just um, share, like when I need to do, when the kids need to do research or whatnot. Um, they get most of their computer experience um, when they go to the library because our media specialist, you know, does things with them on the um, the iPads and whatnot. But for my classroom, the kids don't use it. Um, I use it a little bit just because I need to for my, mm -hmm. you know, um, for my personal self, but uh, not too much, not too much experience. Okay, Thanks. great. Thank you, Jolene. Welcome, Jolene. Sorry, second grade. You're brave. You're braver than me, those little kids. <laughs> and I know we have one more person, but maybe warming. Oh, I see a message in the chat too. Great. Okay, Jennifer, great. Okay, so we have already a wide span. Hi, Trisha, great. Toddlers. Oh, I have two toddlers. I don't know how you do it. Although mine is like, he's already so savvy with the tech. It's kind of, it's a little bit scary as a mom, but all right, great. So um, wide range already of teachers, and I'm sure each of you are gonna find Google Classroom useful for different things. I certainly have depending on, you know, which, um, which even individual family or student. So great, thank you so much, welcome. All right, so, uh, I teach the olders as well. Right now I teach middle schoolers, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, but I, I have taught all the way through 12th. Um, secondary English is what I have my teaching certificate in. Uh, right now I teach at the Volcano School of Arts and Sciences on the Big Island. Um, we're a very small charter school and I teach in their blended learning program. Um, but before that I taught for six years at the Hawaii Academy of Arts and Sciences in Pohoa, also for their blended learning program. Um, I'm a foodie. I'm a word nerd. I love doing anything outside. I love living in Hawaii. I was born in New York. So this time of year, I'm like, there's no snow. It's amazing outside. I can go out. Um, and I also have two little toddlers that my husband is watching. So just apologies for any background noise. Like I understand the dogs and, and those kinds of things. So welcome. It's so great to have you here. Um, 
So I set this up like 10 tips and tricks, but I also set up a Google Classroom for us to kind of look at and explore. Um, so later on, I will invite you to join that Google Classroom as a student if, if, you, if you feel comfortable with that. Um, it's just blank and I will delete it after this session. So it's just for us to play and look at during this. Um, and if at any time you want me to stop or slow down or you have a question, you can type it in the chat, just unmute yourself and, and hop in, whatever is easiest. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is just show you the Google Classroom that I created. Um, let me exit here and I'll bring it up. So when you first get into Google Classroom, as you probably all know, you see your classes, um, your stream is kind of like where you post your announcements classwork this is where you post your work and people this is where you can invite co-teachers and students i just have a, a blank student account i created in here already and then you have your grades tab and google classroom just added the grades tab i don't know about three or four years ago and it's super helpful um so this is where you start but I, my first tip and trick is to manage your notifications um because when you first create a Google Classroom, it's just all of the notifications can are turned on and it can be extremely overwhelming. Um, so it helps you minimize the contact from Google. I know as teachers, we're like overwhelmed with emails all the time and deleting them is like its own job. So my first tip to save you time is to manage your notifications. And I will show you how to do that right now. So if you're in your uh, classroom. <clears throat> you can just click the wheel up here. Class details, grading. Oh, Sorry, it's over here. Classes. Okay, notifications. So you can just do it for all of your classes if you're teaching multiple. It sounds like um, you're both elementary teachers. So I don't know, maybe you just have one class. I only usually have one or two classes for my students. So I like to do it, you know, not instead of by class, but, but for the overall. Um, so I like to allow some email notifications. They give you a lot of options. So comments on your posts, I generally turn that one off. Comments that mention you. Private comments on work, I like to leave that one. So that's when students have left you a private comment on an assignment and they're asking just specifically you for help. So that helps me. I'm on my email sometimes more than my Google Classroom. And so that allows me to like really get, you know, see those as they're coming in and respond to students in a timely manner. Um, I don't like to receive <laughs> notifications from other classes. Sometimes I'm in with other teachers to kind of check out what they're doing, um, offer support. And so, but I find that I don't need all of those notifications. So you can just toggle them off. Um, and then late submissions of student work. So this is like you have an assignment, it was due Friday, the student turns the, the work in on Saturday, Google sends you an email letting you know that that's coming in. Um, and I actually find that one really useful. You, you can view late work a lot of other ways, but it can be useful to have that email reminder. Um, same with resubmission. So if you give a student, you know, not a full grade and they go back and make corrections and they resubmit it, can be useful to have that email as well. Um, invitations to co-teach classes doesn't happen very often. Scheduled, post, published, or failed, also useful. So that's like you tried to post something and it didn't work. So I find all of these classes you teach notifications to be useful and not that aggressive. Like you don't get them that often. Um, so I like leaving those ones on, but a lot of the other ones, I think it's it's helpful to toggle them off um, because you just, you don't need the constant email communication from Google. I also have my students do this the first time that they sign into Google Classroom. So if you're with the littles, it might help them, you know, it might help if you do this for them, especially if you have a parent attached to their account. Um, because then it just reduces the spam for parents as well and for students. Um, my students can find like all those emails incredibly overwhelming. So yeah, 
First tip and trick, reduce the spam, reduce the Google spam. Um, toggle those notifications so that you're not getting a thousand emails through Google Classroom. Any questions about tip number one? Pretty basic. I think we're all kind of used to the, the reducing of spam. Okay, great. Um, tip number two, topics. Um, have either of you used topics in the, your Google Classroom experience? Yeah, okay, great. I think there are, there are a few different ways to use topics to organize the work in your Google Classroom. Um, and it kind of depends on your group or your age level. This year I'm using weekly topics. So each week it's an, it's its own topic and it has a whole group of work that's due in that week. My coworker uses it very differently. So if your students aren't using Google Classroom as their main classroom platform, it might make sense to have the topics be organized more like topic or subject. Um, if you're a project based learning academy and you can organize it by different projects. So it helps to kind of play with that and see what organization of topics works best for you and your students. Um, and it's not that hard to rename them and move things around within topics. So start with what feels intuitive for you, troubleshoot it, and then kind of see how, see how it's going. And I can show you what that looks like right now. So once you're in your classwork tab, you can create a topic here <clears throat> and it creates a line of it over here. And you can kind of move them around. So like if you wanted your first week up top, you could move it that way um, and you just click and drag them. Google makes everything pretty easy. Um, another thing I like about topics is that students don't see new topics until you actually post work to them. So it can be like a good way to minimize the amount of stuff students see. Um, it, so for example here, let me bring up my student version of this, uh, of this classroom. So if I'm a student in, in this class, I will only be able to see the work, the week one topic for now. See week one, it's the only topic I see over here. And I only see the assignments that have already been assigned. So I like the topics as a teacher for organizing as well, because especially for <clears throat> big long projects where you're back planning and you kind of have an idea of where you want your students to be in four or five weeks, then you can lay it out in Google Classroom way ahead of time. And it helps sort of, it, it helps me stay organized and know where I'm going and kind of know that I have that structure built in and then I can go in and edit and modify as I learn more about my students. So topics can be really helpful. Um, I think without the topics, you would just have one big long line of unorganized assignments and it can be kind of a nightmare. <clears throat> I actually have a colleague who used current and post, like current assignments, past assignments as her only two topics. Um, and then she would just post a few to her, you know, to the current topic for that week. And then once it was due, she would move it to post. So that that's a simpler organization of topics as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. You also, once you have topics, can always create assignments that aren't within the topic. So sometimes I like to post materials. They're not really assignments. It's just extra stuff. Check out this cool video on space shuttles. And um, you can just post them with no topic selected over here. And then they just kind of sit up top. So from the student side. It would just kind of sit up above above their topics. Yeah, so you can work within them and without them, but I have to tell you I that you need them. <laughs> They're really useful for organizing your work for you and for your students. Any questions about how to utilize topics in Google Classroom? No? Okay. 
And like I always say, it's like really easy to change. So it's really easy to, you know, try something and if it doesn't work, move it around. So don't ever let that stop you from experimenting and trying something new if it's not working for you and your students. I actually started doing subjects and then it was like the English language arts list of assignments was getting to be like, you know, 30, 40 assignments large and and it just wasn't working for anybody. So that's why this this year I'm doing the dates by week. Okay, tip number three is scheduling. So Google Classroom allows you to schedule assignments. This helps you plan ahead without bogging down your students with all of the work for the quarter or the semester or the year that they can see it. Um, it also, like as teachers, we love to plan ahead into the distance, you know, it helps us stay sane in the moment with the with the students. So if you are scheduling assignments it, ahead of time, it can really help with that, that planning ahead process. Um, so when you're planning on putting your assignments in Google Classroom, think about like what assignments you can just make weekly. That, don't, that you don't have to change each week. So for example, in my classroom, I was posting, um, the New York Times does this great weekly picture. They post it on a Sunday and it's just a one of the images from their website without the caption. And it just asks students to like, look at what's going on in the picture. What do you think is happening here? And then write about that. And they can actually even post it on the New York Times blog. And then on Thursday, the New York Times updates that website with the actual picture caption. And so my students have loved that as a writing assignment because they're sort of involved with students from all over the world. The pictures are really intriguing. And, um, and I can just post the link to New York Times each week and they automatically update it. So the assignment is just for 15 minutes on a Monday morning, check out the picture, write about what you think is happening, write why you think it's happening, cite your evidence, and then check back on a Thursday and see how you did. And I can just post that every single week. So already I have something for students to do and work on every single week that doesn't take me like recreating the wheel um, every week. So I think that sort of thing for bell ringers, daily journals, um, like if you have a, a really great reading log or journal that students have to do every week, this is a good way to use that. And you can always cancel a scheduled assignment or edit it, um, even after it posts. So no pressure there. Um, let me show you what that looks like. So here on the teacher side of this classwork, you see that I have assignments that are already in color, like this introduce yourself assignment is green. This one has already been posted to Google Classroom. So students are able to see this assignment. But if you notice from the student side, they can't see any of the other topics or work that I can see. And that's because I scheduled it for the future. So I always schedule all my assignments for the week to post on a Sunday. And then they're usually due like on a Friday to give my students that whole week to work on it. So if you're using Google Classroom as a supplement to your to your class, then maybe you can post them like have them scheduled for the Monday, the Tuesday, the Wednesday, the Thursday, the Friday. Um, it depends on, you know, what works for your age age group. The olders, I think, have the have enough responsibility to schedule their week for themselves. That's a that's a skill, in fact, that we try to teach them. But the littles, it might be helpful to have like a little something each day. You know, you got like your mystery science Monday and your, you know, whatever works. So when you create an assignment um, and you type in your information and your instructions and you upload any content you need to that assignment, then over here before you post it, Let's do this due date for February 5th. So you say when it's due, put it in its topic. And then up here, you can schedule. It's not gonna let me because I don't have anything in here yet. So 
So instead of just clicking assign, which would pop it up for a student right in that second, you can schedule ahead of time. So I could schedule it for the Sunday before or the Thursday at 8 a.m. I could schedule it for after the school day if you really don't want them to look at it till they get home. <clears throat> and then it just kind of sits right in my topic. And on February 2nd at 2 p.m., it will post to Google Classroom, it'll go live, and your students will be able to see it and access it. So yeah, it can be really useful for planning ahead. Any questions about scheduling work in Google Classroom? Okay. Okay, my fourth tip is always join your Google Classroom as a student. I just create like a dummy Google account or in my school, we just create like student one, student two at our school. And it's so helpful because otherwise it can be really hard to see what your students see. And sometimes I think I'm seeing it the way that they're seeing it in Google Classroom and I'm not at all. Um, so it can be really helpful just for you to be able to hop in as a student. It's also really, really useful for showing parents how to work Google Classroom because parents aren't going to see your view, right? They're going to see their students' view. And so especially with my, my blended learning programs, parents are integral. And I know in any education program, parents are integral. So if students are doing work on Google Classroom at home with their parents, having the student account can be so helpful. And you can even um, give that login information to parents as like a general account so that if they want to check in on the student side without having to have their student login they have that information it's always better for them to just have their students login information but for like the older kids for my middle schoolers and my high schoolers sometimes they want to give their students that independence to not share their password but they also want to be able to see like okay what's you know what's going on in google classroom so right now, if you want to get into my, the classroom I'm currently showing you as a student to just kind of check out the student side of things, you can put your Gmail in the chat and I can add you in. Has, has anyone ever seen Google Classroom from the student side? Like, do you guys ever pop in from the student side? Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Moana, and welcome, Moana. We didn't get to hear your introduction, but welcome. If you want, let us know where you teach, what grade you teach, and and um, and how much experience you have with Google Classroom. So there's a few different ways to add students to Google Classroom. Yeah, it's it's so helpful. It's really great. Okay, thanks, Trisha. Um, you can just give them the class code, but I find it easier to just add them as students. So let me go ahead and add you all. Welcome, Moana. We have another second grade teacher with us. You guys are amazing. Okay. And we got Trisha. Oh, great. Okay. Moana, do you use it in the classroom or do you tend to send students home with it? I usually use Google Classroom in the classroom. Okay. Um, not everyone has um, online access at home. Sure. So it's there as an option to use at home, but it's mostly for use in the classroom. Okay, great. Oh, it's not gonna let me add you, Jennifer, I'm sorry. Because probably because of the, it won't let me add my personal student account either. But anyway, let's see if everybody else is gonna be able to get in. Okay, there we go. So I just sent you an invite. It'll pop up in your email. 
Um, so you can go see what students see from even their email side. Go ahead and join the classroom. Okay, I think yours worked. I think Moana and Trisha, we got you in. And feel free, take some time to play around in there, like click the assignments, try, you know, try, see what it looks like to submit work, the options for how to turn in stuff, how to attach a Google slide. Um, I can walk you through some of those things right now from the student side. It's so funny how long I taught with Google Classroom before I joined as a student, um, because I think I just was imagining that some things were easier for my kids than they weren't. And as you guys know, there's so much it's like this double learning that they have to do where they're learning the content, but then they're also learning, you know, how to handle the tech. Um, so it's this, it's a really steep learning curve and it's a lot, you know, it feels like a lot for students to juggle. So being able to hop into this student account is really helpful to even just show, do video tutorials. Like I'm imagining if you're in a classroom and you have your own student account, you can hop in. And then as you're showing them how to do things, you know, you can show it from the student side so they're seeing exactly what you're seeing up on the, you know, what's projected up there. One of the hardest things my students find is attaching work to an, to an assignment. Right. And so I've turned this one in. Let me unsubmit it here for a second. And so adding or creating, you know, they can either create this new for the assignment right here, or they can add something they've already created in Google Drive. A lot of my students prefer to do their work by hand, and we do a lot of art and journal writing and um, even pictures and videos that they're creating at home. Um, so being able to add a file for them is useful, you know, if they're emailing it to their school email address and then, and then getting it that way. Okay. Welcome, Laura. I'm glad to see you here. If you would like to join the Google Classroom I'm showing right now as a student, you can put your email address um, in, the, in the Google chat and I can add you in so you can kind of check it out from the student side as well. <clears throat> Yeah, so again, this is what I see in classwork, and this is what a student sees in classwork, so it's very different. Oh, sorry, here, let me, thank you, let me reshare here. So that sorry, guys... Moana, I'm not able to um, get into the classroom, I guess I'm not getting the invite. Oh, no, okay, let me try again here to add you in. Thank you for letting me know. It's never as seamless as you hope. <laughs> Always say hiccup. Oh, you know what? Maybe there's uh, my, I didn't type my email correctly. It's K-12, not K-1. Oh, okay. Got you. I should have picked up on that Sorry too. That. No, that's okay. I should have picked up on that because... I have one of those same email addresses, but I always manage to forget what that extension is. Okay, here we go. All right. Oh, it's not gonna let let me add K-12. If you have a, um, a different email address you wanna use, um, then you can go ahead and post that. But I think because it's a Google, because we have our specific like DOE, you know, um, what is that called? I think I have my um, personal Gmail on there. Okay, let me go see if I can find that. Oh, got it. Okay, thank you, Moana. All right, let me put you in there. Okay, it says invited, fingers crossed. All right, let me go ahead and share again here. Um, and I'll try to remember to switch it over. Okay, so here is the, the student view. 
Oh, I'm sorry, here's the students. Hmm. Here we go. So here's that student side classwork stream. So I just one more time because I wasn't sharing. Adding work for students can be so confusing. So having this up, you know, they just click add or create. They can they can create a doc or a slides or sheets or drawings from scratch, or they can click on their Google Drive and select something. So like a lot of my students want to take pictures of their work and turn it in and attach it. Um, so it can be, you know, useful to walk them through this, this Google Drive piece. And also just as a teacher, um, uploading the, that work to Google Classroom can really help stay organized. So, you know, we all have like our huge file cabinets with tons of student work in it or the student portfolios. Having the online version can be really useful. Um, and then all students have a classroom folder that's created in Drive for them when they join a class as a as a student. So you can even share this folder with parents. So if you're doing stuff at school and then you're uploading the pictures, you know, parents can check in on their students work in the classroom. And, and then when it comes to like evaluation time or, you know, you have your accreditation coming up and you need evidence of what you're doing, this can make it a lot easier than sorting through all of those files. Yeah. So join your classroom as a student really really helpful to see that student side and easy i mean you can you know creating a gmail email account takes no time at all so worth it okay let me reshare back to our um presentation any questions about joining as a student was everybody able to get into the google classroom as a student that wanted to okay perfect all right <clears throat> I have a question. Yeah. About the um, <clears throat> student work. Yes. Um, I know it would save all student work. In the past, when I would use it, it would save the student work in my drive. Mm -hmm. But then I wasn't um, ever sure how to use it. Use but the drive folder. Yeah, yeah. I taught, I taught music, and so I had a separate <laughs> Google Classroom for each grade level. Yeah, okay. All these files, but I'm not sure how to best use those. I guess those those files. files. Yeah, yeah. And I I ran up on that same problem because it's like before you get the classroom, you have everything organized like in other drive files. And then Google Classroom just automatically creates this drive file for you. Yeah. So to be honest, <laughs> I haven't found a good way either. I think okay. sharing <laughs> sharing individual student ones with parents, but of course, Google Classroom organizes it like by assignment, not by student. Yeah. So that can be a challenge. Um, it, I've kind of just ignored it unless I really need to go find all of the files from a specific assignment. So like, let me, let, let's walk through what that looks like. Um, so if I go to my uh, drive here, I'm just gonna stop sharing for a minute because this is in my, my personal email. Um, let me go find that classroom. Okay, so um, what Juan is talking about is when you create a Google Classroom, um, Google automatically creates a Google Drive folder for Classroom. Um, and then everything that students and you turn into Google Classroom, it kind of populates the, the folder um, uh, for that class. So let me show you kind of what this looks like over here. Um, so here is, it just sits in your drive and it's called classroom. It creates a separate folder for each class that you teach. Um, so we're in Kula, I teach. So then it has the, you know, the assignment that I posted, introduce yourself. It's got her response and then also the assignment. So I guess if you wanted to use this as your primary organization for Google Classroom, you could, you know, go and use this to like print all of the student work that you need. Or if you need to go pull like an example of you using 
I don't know, common core state standards for an evaluation and you know that this one assignment um, has that and you need student work samples, you can easily share this folder uh, with admin or, you know, with anybody that you need to. So you just would click the share and then that person is going to have access to everything in that folder. Um, so that might be a useful way to do it rather than trying to like pull each individual student assignment off of Google Classroom. You know, you could just share this virtual folder. Um, yeah, you would just, you know, unrestrict it. Anyone with the link can view and um, that kind of thing. Then they have the assignment as well. So that's useful. They can see what you posted. Um, so I, I have like my Google Classrooms all shared with my, my admin and my parents added to each student. Um, but I think even it, that's like confusing for some people to search through that and find the specific assignment you're talking about. So I suppose you could use it kind of that way. Um, <clears throat> I think in terms of looking at it like as a teacher for grading or for organization, I haven't found it useful. It's just Google Classroom is already so well organized for those kinds of things. Um, but yeah, I think if you if you needed to share one whole assignment with somebody else, that could be useful to use it that way. Okay, but as far as like having all work by one student on Google mm. Classroom, there's no folder created like that, right? Um, no, not one folder. Although the Google Classroom does this same thing for students. So like, let's check it out from the student side. Um, let me share the student side. So I wonder if a good solution would be to have your students like as a first assignment share their Google Classroom folder with you. So if I look at it from um, here, let me move this down uh, from the student side. It gives me a classroom folder. Um, and then if I click on that, everything that I create or turn in automatically goes into here. It's just that right now I haven't here. Let me turn this one in and then it should populate it, I believe. So you're saying if so, the students have their Google Classroom folder created for them on their drive. Correct. And wanted to be able to see what they see in their Google Classroom drive, just ask them to add me to it. Yeah, I think that oh, okay. could be a good way to do it. Like, uh, so let's turn this let's turn this in and just make sure but I think yeah that could work and then you could and then it, it should be labeled even from your side like by the owner you know like this student owns this folder mm -hmm. um okay. yeah kind of like how mine showed up on yours wait hmm. exactly yeah um I can share mine with you and I just want to see if it shows up <laughs> yeah let's do it I know because you think these things are going to work and then you get and it's and like yeah uh, miss <laughs> I know <laughs> it's not letting me yeah okay let me turn this in my my about me page that I created as a student hmm. so if I wanted <clears throat> to share this cool I teach folder with you I would hmm. share it and I would put you your name in. So yours is, uh, what is your email? Oh, let me put it in the chat here. Um, and I'm using uh, my personal, so it's Miss Jackie Ramirez at gmail.com. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. And you know what? I'm looking at it from the student side and I don't actually see the assignment that I just submitted in my Google Classroom folder. I thought it populated those like it does for us, but maybe a student would actually have to organize that themselves. So they would have to go to their drive and move the about me into their classroom. Okay, so I just shared my Google Classroom drive with you. Okay, let me go see if I can see the work. <laughs> I'm just curious. Yeah, this is a good time to do it. Let's see. Um, 
here let me look through my email sorry for the the dead air everybody <laughs> but i do think this is like important to check out now um, and just see if it works because it's a good question like as teachers we always think about looking at our students you know, by student instead of like by assignment or class yeah yeah so it makes sense to want to do it that way maybe click on shared with me um yeah this one so the one that we're seeing on the screen is um is the student account here let me stop my share i'm just hesitant to show my personal drive oh um hmm. yeah but I can, let me see if I can find it. I did find the assignment, introduce yourself, but that was automatically shared through Google Drive. So I didn't actually get the invitation for your classroom folder. Hmm. Hmm. Let me make sure I'm not missing it. Yeah. Yeah. On my end, it shows it's shared with JMS. Jack oh, Jeremy. oh, maybe I mistyped it. It's um MS, like Miss. Oh, MS, got it. Jackie, right. yeah, like Miss Jackie Ramirez at gmail.com. Sorry, I just copy and pasted. I'm so sorry. No, though, it's I've done the same Try thing. Again. Okay. if it's popped up all right just sent it hopefully okay it oh i think yes i think i'm seeing it okay so um oh and look your your work is in there oh Juan, i think you found a cool workaround here let me share this um i'll show you what i see from my teacher side so you shared with me your kula i teach folder although you know it doesn't have your name so you might want to have students edit like, I wonder if they can edit it from their side to have their initials or their name or something just to keep so you don't have a thousand, you know, Kula I teach folders with no idea which students which and look it's got your assignment right there. Okay, yeah so here let's. Um, Maybe give me want... another assignment and I, just I was just <laughs> it goes in there just to collect. I was just gonna say yeah. yeah let's try another one Okay, so let me edit um, from my side this next assignment. We'll try the writing journal. Okay, so instead of scheduling it, I will just assign it right now to all students. Actually, this is a good time for me to just walk. Oh, I don't see you in here. Oh, okay. Let me try this. On my Zoom. Here we go. Okay. Yeah, so this is another useful thing to note is that if a student joins your class late, they might not see all the assignments that other students do. But generally, I can edit it um, to include the missing student. So, Moani, you probably don't see this one yet. Let me see if I can add you in. <laughs> Oh, that's weird. It's showing you haven't joined the class yet. Let me refresh. There you are. Okay. Okay, Moana, go ahead and try the writing journal and we'll see if it pops in. And um, while we'll come back to that and I'll move to tip number five, and then we'll come back and we'll see if the new assignment has popped into your folder. And hopefully it pops in without you even having to share it with me again, right? It should just populate in there. So let's try that. Um, so the next tip that I have for Google Classroom are rubrics. So does anybody use rubrics to grade student work? Yeah, I think by now we're all in team rubric. Um, it can be so helpful 
for making your life easier, for student students' lives easier, for just letting everybody know like we're all on the same page with our expectations, what we're what we're wanting from students. And Google has this great feature where you can import a, a rubric to the Google Classroom. And then it lets you grade student work just right there in Google Classroom using the rubric. Uh, so let me walk you through what that looks like in Google Classroom. And then before we take our five minute break, we'll hop back and check in with, um, with Moana's folder and see if that worked. <clears throat> okay. So where did I, oh, I posted it for the argumentative letter. So if you notice when I click on this assignment, um, which I'm just gonna go ahead and edit right now so that you can all see it from the student side. And welcome, Randy. If you want to join this Google Classroom as a student, you can just put your email address in the chat and I'll go ahead and add you in. Right now, everybody's exploring kind of the student side of this Google Classroom because most of us are used to seeing the teacher side. Um, so it can be really cool to see the student side. Um, so this argumentative letter, um, I went ahead and as a teacher attached a rubric to it. And then I also attached a copy of the Google Sheet so students are able to see that rubric. They I believe students can also click on the rubric and view it. Let's make sure Let me refresh this. Okay, here's the student side. So now we can see the argumentative letter. Yep, so I can see the copy of the rubric in sheets, but I can also view it here as a student. So for an argumentative letter, like I just like to pull the Common Core State Standards, trying to use that language more with my students as, you know, we're all expected to kind of prepare them to use that language in, in future academia. Um, so hopefully we re reviewed this as a class, of course, before I just throw it up as a rubric. But um, when I go to grade this assignment as a teacher, um, instead of having to leave lots of specific student feedback or really long private messages to my students with feedback on their work, uh, I can use this rubric and I just click the box that pertains to them. Um, so it makes grading a lot more seamless, a lot more in depth. And it's also a great way to communicate with students like here's what I'm expecting from you. Here's how you're going to earn points on this assignment. Um, so, for example, this argumentative rubric one, it has the introduction, developing claims, transitions, um, style and tone, and conclusions. So, this is what it looks like from the student side. You can view the rubric, you can view the assignment. Um, let me show you what it looks like from the teacher side, which I think is for this one where the magic really happens. So on the student side, I'm looking, it looks like the student can grade themselves because I have a place where I click on a drop down menu and I can click meet standards approaches below and an incomplete. Oh, cool. <laughs> I, so I so let me, was, what was intended, but yeah, but let me look cool at this see. from here. <laughs> um, Because when I see it from my, let me just make sure when I see it from my student side, I'm not actually I don't think I can actually click right there. That's what happens on my end is that you can drop, click it. I can click on it and I can select my. Oh, no, I guess you can't. It just shows it. OK, yeah, I think Bad. it just shows the rubric, although for self grading, that would be very cool <laughs> if you could let each student, you know, give themselves a, a pre evaluation. So far, I haven't found a way to let a student grade themselves in a rubric unless you want to just attach like I have the copy of the you know, of the sheets version of this, and then they could go in and like give themselves a, a, a pre-grade or even like peer review would be, would be cool for that. Um, but yeah, I think it just, it walks them through what it looks like. And then the pull down gives you the specifics, right? So here's, if you met it approaches below or incomplete. Okay. So from the teacher side, it looks like uh, student work. Let me go ahead and submit something as a student. Oh, 
Okay, so I've turned this in from my example student account. Another really great reason to join as a student, because you can kind of see, you know, if you turn it in from the teacher side, what is this going to look like? Um, and then if I go back to the teacher side, and I see that this student has turned it in. Now it's kind of like what you were, what you were seeing Moana, but you can click it. So like, okay, student has approached the standard on this and it automatically updates the scores, right? Student is, and you don't even have to do the drop down if you're really familiar with your rubrics. All right, so this is the student grade. So let's say like you grade them on the rubric, but you know, you need that wiggle room that sometimes we do as teachers like, well, you know, they, they, they're sort of in between approaching and meets here. You can always go and edit this as well. So the rubric makes the grading really easy, but then you still have that ability as a teacher to kind of up or down as needed um, if you feel like you need it. And then you can always like add them a private comment. Hey, I saw that you did really well in this piece, but you know, take some more time to work on your transitions. So this can make grading so much easier when you have big assignments or even just little ones, you know, and can you it, see me this show. Oh, sorry. No, can go you ahead. Show the student end of your, the student's view of your um, grade there. Sure. Let me, um, let me return it. And then let's go check out what the students will see. Oh, you know, I wish I had, well, I still can here. send that private comment and then I'll show you what it looks like over here from the student side. Um, and this is actually a kind of a good segue into how students can view their work. So students view their work a number of ways. Um, they have the to-do list here. A lot of my students really like this to-do list, but then a lot of them also forget that to click later or like pass due stuff and they miss work that way. Um, a lot of them really like the calendar because it shows like, you know, by day when things are due. I don't like this view as much because to me, it just kind of ends up looking like a pile. But I think if you had one due every day, this might be a great way to view it. Um, and you can also select just for specific classes. Um, I like to encourage my students to view their work over here in the view your work tab. So it shows the due date here, it shows the status of their assignment, and this is also really easy to print. So later we'll talk about like ways to communicate with parents over Google Classroom. Um, and one of my, my favorite ways to talk to my parents is just to literally print this screen as a list of work um, because it means the student, uh, the parents don't have to get on the computer at all. And they have a list and it shows clearly like, okay, you turn the argumentative letter in, but you got a 70. So now get on your computer and show me, you know, the work and why you got a 70. So, okay, let's check out the argumentative letter. Grade is right there. Private comment comes up, view details. So now they see the grade. And then they can access their work here. Cool, yeah. It is really good. Cool. I like but it. It's yeah. like a handwritten assessment that they've done, but we still like to grade them like this. Like yeah, this. so there's a few few different options for that. Um, one, you can have them take a picture of their work and upload it to the Google Classroom assignment. That's been my preference because then you have everything organized right in Google Classroom. And like, if we're talking about the organization with that classroom folder being shared with you, then it's automatic. And also if you have a lot of students putting, putting that in their 
to-do list, you know, takes it off of yours, like having to organize everything. Um, so I like that method that take a picture and turn it in or, you know, take a video and turn it in. Um, and then you just, it's just the file here. You see, you know, the, the picture instead of the doc right here. Um, and you can grade it using the rubric just the same. Um, another option is you receive that piece of work from a student physically, and you can still assign them the grade on Google Classroom, even if they haven't turned it in. Um, so let's see what that looks like. If I go on the teacher side, um, okay. Oh, what, what am I doing here? I'm trying to share this new page, the teacher side. Okay, here we go. So um, if you have a student and like, let's see Moana, you, you have turned in your assignment to me in person physically, and you didn't touch the Google Classroom, you're just not tech savvy, you don't have internet at home, you don't get it, you know, it's the end of the class period, but the student has done the work. I, as the teacher, can still give you feedback, even if you haven't turned anything in. So I could grade you right here, you know, on the on the rubric. And then for myself, I like to leave a comment that just reminds me like here, let me move this out of the way. Um, student submitted work by hand. And then it lets like a parent and me and the student know I got your work. It, it's not here, you know, but I have it. And then give you your grade and return it to you. Let me do that right now so you can check it out. <clears throat> the challenge with rubrics is that it looks very easy on the Google Classroom side. Creating those rubrics in Sheets is can be like a nightmare um, because Google Classroom is very specific about what needs to go where in order to upload a rubric. So I really want to show you um, how to do that. And the easiest way is just to Google a template. And I have the best one I found is by Alice Keeler. She's just an educator. She runs a blog. She has a lot of awesome resources, but she has this free um, Google Classroom template rubric and when you click on it it just asks you to make a copy you make a copy add it to your google drive um, and it's the best one i found and it's the one that i'm using for this argumentative letter so i'll go ahead and put this link in the chat um, if you want to go click on it and play with it while i'm talking um, it's really really useful because i've tried to just open a google sheets and start myself and it takes forever to figure out where Google wants, like what heading and, you know, where this goes and where that goes. So um, let me show you what that looks like. <clears throat> I just quickly get back to my Google Drive here for... <clears throat> Okay, so here, here's what the sheets side of, of the, the rubric looks like. Okay, and you have the view only version of this because I posted it to Google Classroom as well. Um, when you get it from Alice, it's a, it's a lot more basic. Uh, let, me show, let me walk you through what that looks like. So it just pops up, it asks you to make a copy. And I keep just this blank copy available to myself all the time. So I can edit it and add as I need. <clears throat> and then you just sort of populate this here in Google Sheets. So we see the introduction, the introduce precise claims, and her template is, is very specific, right? So what's the title? What's the description? 
does it meet approach below incomplete and then you add your description in so these um, ones right here I don't even really touch I just leave the meets although at my school we do meets approaching or exceeds meets approaching not met so generally I edit it for those headings um, add your description in add your title of that one rubric piece and the description of what that means Once you have your rubric built in Google Sheets, then you gotta go to your Google Classroom and add it. So we'll just add this same one to another assignment. So right over here in Google Classroom, you see the little rubric option. You can create it from scratch, but they don't really give you a great template. I think it's much easier to start with her one and have it built in your Google Drive before you add it to Google Classroom. So then you just import it from Sheets. Add it. And so if you click the, the create new rubric, um, this is kind of what you see, but it's blank. So I, I don't know, maybe this is easier to me. This looks sort of more of a nightmare than doing it on Google Sheets, but you know, whatever works better for you. Um, and then you just save it. And it's, and it's there, there for you to use. You can also um, reuse a rubric. So if you're using the same one over and over again, like we were talking about scheduling those bell ringers, those weekly assignments are the same, reusing that same rubric over and over again can be super useful, very time-saving um, you know, for teachers in terms of grading. Okay, any questions about using rubrics in your Google Classroom? Okay, let's, let's look back um, at, at Moana's folder and see if we can see any new work. Let's go see. <clears throat> Oh, so cool. Okay, check it out. Mona, I think you've found the way to use that folder usefully. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Cause I'm gonna all, use this. All the students, one, all the students work is in one folder. I like that. <laughs> there you go. And I like too, that it's not like in all of these crazy subfolders. You know, it's not like you have to click on, you know, the, oh, the argumentative letter assignment folder and then click on that. It's all just right there as, as work. So that's very cool. Yeah. I yeah. Agree. Mm -hmm. Awesome. <laughs> I'm going to add it. It's tip number 11. That's really great. And so you would just have to, again, have them um, share it with you. Let's just see if, if I'm able as a student to edit the name of that folder to have my initials. I think you're able to, but just to make sure Google doesn't have it blocked. Okay. <clears throat> um, that's not the right one. Here we go. See, okay, so uh, this is great. Look at this email. I didn't edit my notifications as a student and I just get so many emails, it's overwhelming. So again, it's useful for students to be able to go and edit their notifications as well. Um, okay, let's see if I go to my drive, classroom. Rename, all right, so I could just do JR. 
Perfect. Yeah, that's great. Okay. All right. So um, we're about uh, 60 minutes in. We're about an hour in. Um, so I have a five minute break built in. I know all teachers, you have like super bodies that don't need to take a break ever, but I think it's a good idea. Um, so let me put that up. Um, so we'll be back in about five minutes um, and then we'll, we'll continue. Um, I'm gonna just grab some water and then I'll be back if anybody has questions while we're gone. Um, I'll be around. Okay, get this.
<clears throat> okay, welcome back, everybody. Um, I just did a quick Google search while we were on break to see if you could get like pre made Google Sheets rubrics for Google Classroom on Teachers Pay Teachers, because that would be so useful, you know, if you to, to source those. And, and I don't see any on Teachers Pay Teachers popping up. Um, but anyway, you could build your rubric library and then get on Teachers Pay Teachers and make some extra. <laughs> extra teacher money for all your hard work. Okay, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep moving through the tips. Um, if you guys think of anything and you wanna stop me, please, by all means. Did anybody join us a little bit late who might wanna join the Google Classroom as a student? If you if you do and, and I haven't added you yet, um, you can add your email address. Oh, Laurel, I see yours. Let me see if I can add you. Although I believe the Sacred Hearts domain um, wasn't allowing us to, to do it, which is the same for my Volcano School domain. But let's give it a let's give it a try. So Laurel, if you have a, a personal email address um, that you would like to try as well, I can always try that. But if not, I understand. Yeah, okay, I'm not gonna let us do it. Okay, so um, the next tip that I have is assigning work to certain students. Um, so differentiation is huge. Um, and I know myself, like even in the sixth through eighth grade, grade band, I have, you know, readers at a first grade level, readers at a 12th grade level, um, students that need like more support or less support with complex tasks, um, all those things. So assigning to certain students helps you differentiate. And it does so in a way that's that can be really discreet. So if your students are using Google Classroom in the class, and you don't want to like make it obvious um, that some students have, you know, a slightly different assignment than others or you know are are being asked to do more or less um, assigned to certain students is a great way to do it so let me show you how to do that so if i go back to my google classroom here and let's say um that i decide that only certain students for this choose your novel assignment um, need to choose one book for the quarter um, and others need to read a book every two weeks like i'm deciding like this group you know is ready for a bigger challenge this group needs a little more time otherwise expectations are the same what you can do is um when you're in the the editing the assignment area you can select certain students so i'm just going to give this one um to moana and trisha and i'll save it i'm so and sorry I'm, i just got back and i heard my name oh <laughs> i'm Moana's just doing now she's moana's getting the advanced version <laughs> of this assignment. So I'm talking about how to um, select certain students for certain assignments. So you can di differentiate within Google Classroom. So some students see one thing and some students see another. And I think um, one of the most useful ways I found of doing this is by just literally posting the same assignment with the same title, but you slightly change your expectations in your instructions so that when students are in a classroom, it's not obvious to them who is getting this assignment and who is getting that assignment, right? So it's like a very discreet way to differentiate. And so that's what I'm showing right now. Oh my gosh, we have 15 more minutes. Okay, let me go fast. It went, I was so worried that I wasn't gonna have enough. So that's good. Okay, so you select up here, there's certain students that you want. And I always keep a like a physical roster next to me. These students are in group A, group B, group C, because um, it can be really easy to lose track. So I save that. And now Trisha and Moana, if you check your student side of this classroom, you will be able to see this choose your novel assignment as it's posted right now. 
So then if I as the teacher go back and I've decided that my student account needs a slightly different assignment, I can create reuse post also super useful reuse posts let's it's basically the copy and paste for an assignment. So i'm just going to use the same assignment choose your novel. But instead of asking the student to read one book a quarter i'm going to ask them to choose one book for the semester. Okay, and instead of asking them to do this chapter math. Um, you know, maybe i'm going to just do it for them like share with me how many chapters are in your in your book. So edit the instructions. And then i'm only going to assign this one to my student that needs a little more support or a little more time click assign. So now if I look at this from uh, my student side, I'm going to see something slightly different than Trisha or Moana will see. I hope I'm saying all your names right, by the way. I'm very sorry if I'm mispronouncing anything. So I still see Choose Your Novel, just like everybody else. Um, let me go there. But when I look at it, the instructions are slightly different. Okay, great. So you got the assignment. So see, mine says read one this semester. How many chapters will you read? Um, so this is the, the best way I found to differentiate within a classroom. Um, and then, you know, it's easy to use that reuse post to just sort of reuse it over and over again. If you click the reuse post, you have to reselect the certain students. Um, my kids are really quick at letting me know, Miss Jackie, you assigned me work. That's not for me. You know, so if I make a mistake, they tend to let me know right away. <laughs> Sometimes I don't hear from them for weeks and then I assign them the wrong math and they're like, I don't want to do this math. It's not mine. And it's a good way to know, okay, you're still out there. You're still reading the Google Classroom. Um, so using that tool, the selecting certain students is a great way to, to differentiate that work. Um, any questions about that, about how to differentiate using select students? Okay, great. Okay. Um, tip number seven is a comment bank. Um, this is pretty new in, in Google Docs, but it's you can only really access it through Google Classroom. Um, so this is like if you have comments that you use on student writing over and over and over again, you can save those comments to the comment bank <clears throat> and then just copy and paste them into the work. So I'll show you what that looks like right now. Oh, I see in the chat. Yeah, differentiation is such a challenge as a teacher, I know, and, and it can be so helpful to just reuse the post and not have to rewrite everything again and just edit it. It's wonderful. Um, okay, so if I go back and I look at um, the submitted assignment that we had here. Mm. So here is my students introduce yourself assignment and I want to leave her some comments on her work to let her know you know here's what you did well here's what you didn't do well so i'm in the assignment. I can click over to this little icon here called the comment bank and in there, I can add a comment to the bank or I can copy a comment, I use a lot and add it. So please recheck your work for spelling and grammar errors. Then it's going to sit there for every single student. So if I turn over to Trisha's or Moana's work, I can copy this same comment into her work. So I don't have to retype comments over and over and over again. I just click copy, leave a comment, put it right there. 
Okay. Another thing I love about this feature and that my students really like too, is you can leave links in your comments. So for example, with this one, I'm not able to see your photos. Make sure you have them added correctly. Check out this quick video for more information. So when I leave my student this comment, there's a link to a video on YouTube that talks about adding pictures to, to Google um, Slides. So if you have a bank of stuff that you know your students really struggle with, even if it's like, you know, here's how to correctly use a period, and then you can link to information about how to use a period, um, then, um, then you can, you know, make your life easier and also make that those comments and those corrections more useful for them. So that's a really great way to use the comment bank. Okay, moving through this too quickly. Yeah, and as with anything, I always tell my parents and other teachers and my students, you cannot break Google Classroom. I've tried, you can't do it. Just go try everything and like see what works, you know, cause it, it all, everything works differently for us. Okay, comment bank. Um, tip number eight, make it a quiz. Have you guys used quizzes? This is another great way to grade work quickly. It's like a, it, it works really well for quick check-ins. You know, did you do the reading? Did you understand the basics of this concept? And Google will grade it for you and add that grade to Google Classroom for you. So another, it's a great way to just like make your grading less so you can really focus on the assignments that you need to. Um, let me, I don't want to move too, too quickly through this here. So if you go to, let me post the quiz assignment for you guys, digestive system quiz. So you can go check this out from the student side. I just posted it. So you'll see the notification and you'll see it po pop up in your classwork. Um, when you do this as a teacher, it gives you an option up here to create a quiz assignment, and then you can it'll create a Google form for you. So it'll just give you a blank quiz. You can click on that and edit the quiz. Um, one of my favorite things about the quizzes is this is the self grading function. So like question, and then you have a bunch of different um, answer options. And then it has this answer key. So you click the answer key, you tell it the correct answer, and it gives the points. And it also has the add answer feedback, which I love. So you can say, no, you're incorrect because. So you can even offer direct feedback to the students without having to go in and you know individually give them all feedback. Okay, and the quiz that you guys see in the Google Classroom is set up this way. So if you want to go quiz yourself on the digestive system and see how you do, it'll give you instant feedback. Uh, okay, um, it's really saved me a lot of time. Okay, I'm moving quickly, you guys, because we only have five minutes left. Uh, all right. Next one I found having students be involved with Google Classroom is so useful. And I know most of you have students in the classroom, so this might not be as big of a, of a problem for you, but if you're a blended or online teacher, that student engagement is like you're competing with Instagram and TikTok, and it's hard to be more interesting than those other sources. So finding ways to get students involved in the classroom is, has been really useful for me. So um, I give my students jobs. So everybody has a job each week. Um, some examples are this is called your banner photo. Um, and giving students a chance to submit their own photography to be displayed on the banner photo each week can keep them really engaged. And I even like 
post five options and they vote on their favorite, you know, so that helps them sort of feel like they have ownership over the classroom. Um, a few years ago, one of my students just randomly started posting memes on my Google stream that had to do with the topic that we were studying and the kids like loved it. It was the, the best response I'd gotten from my kids all year. They're like leaving comments. Like, oh, this is so funny. Oh, you're hilarious. And they were all really nice, which for middle schoolers is always like a nice surprise. You know, they were all very kind. And so I started to make that a job once a week I choose an, two new students and their job is to post three related memes or jokes that week on the stream. Um, and it's really cool they love it they love it uh, video questions on the topic in the Google classroom stream so they love making videos now um, and so having them record a video like in CapCut. Um, or on even just their phones and then adding that as a file to the stream. Um, is has been a really great way to engage them too and they you can just say like okay ask a question about something we're learning this week as a as a video and post it and then every other student will go in and leave a comment and a response so it just increases that student engagement a lot more um and then also I love to have my students create how to guides for their fellow students on how to use Google classroom is one of their first assignments. Teach a student how to post a new assignment teach a student how to link to you know this and so then I list keep those as material. In the Google classroom um, so that they can always go back, so then if a student asks hey miss I forgot how to add Google slides, you can say okay we'll go look at so and so's presentation listed in materials in the Google classroom. Okay. The last thing I found so useful is that parent contact piece. So my parents so often tell me that they don't know what their kids are doing in Google Classroom. Their kid is telling them that they turned in the work, but they didn't and they don't know how to check that. And the student's like, no, I'm totally done with everything I have to do. Don't worry, I'm gonna go play video games. And they're like, I don't know how to check. So what I do is every week at the beginning of the week, I basically just go um, to a student's page by clicking people and then the student and it gives a list here of all the work that they have due. And I just print it, but instead of printing, I download it as a PDF and I email it to the parent. And that way they know everything that the student has due that week. And then at the end of the week, I can do that same thing and let them know like, hey, here's what your student did um, congratulations, they get to go to the movies this weekend, or maybe they're, you know, going to spend Saturday catching up. Um, because Google does have a feature where you can add a parent to a student. Um, I don't see where it is here, but usually it comes up right here. You can add a parent. And Google will email them updates, but those updates are really, really hard for my parents to read. I don't think they've ever really found them very useful. So um, that's my last tip. I have a review slide, but I'm running out of time. So I'm just gonna skip over it. Um, the slideshow is available to you. So please go help yourself. I also added some free tools that I've used for online teaching through Google Classroom that I found so super useful. Um, Newzella is, my favorite. It's amazing. It differentiates news based text for different reading levels. Um, so if you're using that differentiation students get the same information, but at different reading levels, it's just so great. Um, and yeah, thank you all so much for coming and for participating and asking questions. You really helped me out. This could have been <laughs> a 20 minute presentation without your help. So yay. Thank you. Thank you guys all for for everything you do. You're just amazing teachers. <clears throat> if you have a chance, complete the survey on the iTeach website. And if you need anything, um, you have my email. So you can just email me later. Okay, thank you. Yes, and a big mahalo to you, Jackie. Um, and for everyone's participation, we hope that you found the session helpful and made some valuable connections. A special thanks again to our sponsors, Sacred Hearts Academy Honolulu and the Augustan Educational Foundation for making this conference free for the past 10 years. Um, like Jackie said, um, please help us by completing the survey on the website itgateway.com, which is in the chat, um, so we can continue to receive grant funding. 
You will also receive a certificate of participation after completing the survey and automatically be entered to win one of 10 $10 Target gift cards if you complete the survey by February 4th. Um, the survey will also be sent to the email address that you registered for the conference with. Um, please make sure to check your spam folder for any emails from iteach808hawaii at gmail.com. Thank you so much for being here today and feel free to join the other sessions coming up. Have a wonderful day.